Somebody goes and sits in the barber shop. Now he's sitting there on the chair and the barber is doing his work. He's got faith that the barber will not cut my head. You go into subways and you have a sandwich. You have faith that he's not poisoned it with some chemical. In the spiritual side, we say, what is the proof, Guruji? Prove it, then I'll follow it. Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 3, Karma Yoga. Verse chanting is followed by translation and commentary by Swami Mukundananda. Ye tve tadabhya suyantaha nanu tishthanti me matam sarva jnana vimudham sthan vidhi nashtana chetasaha But those who find faults with my teachings, being bereft of knowledge and devoid of discrimination, they disregard these principles and bring about their own ruin. Now Sri Krishna says that those who do not follow these instructions, these are the consequences. He is not forcing Arjun. He is just making Arjun aware that each choice has a consequence. So you have your own responsibility. Choose wisely. So there are those who will not follow the instructions. Why? Firstly, because of lack of faith. Bhagavad Gita says, how do I know what it says is the truth? Now, right now, the proof is not there. You will have to follow the process and you will get the proof. So this requires an element called faith. Faith is an essential ingredient. In the spiritual side, we say, what is the proof, Guruji? Prove it, then I'll follow it. But without faith, you can't lead your lives, even in the world. The teacher taught us things in school. We accepted on the basis of faith. We did not question, Mr. Teacher, you said that this is the theorem, the fifth theorem of Euclid. I will not accept it. Quietly have faith. The teacher knows what he is doing. He is teaching. We accepted and we continued. And then slowly, slowly the proofs kept coming. Things started making sense. So in the, in the material realm, if we did not have faith, we could not have done so many things. Somebody goes and sits in the barber shop. Now he's sitting there on the chair and the barber is doing his work. He's got faith that the barber will not cut my head. Now supposing he doubts. You go into subways and you have a sandwich. You have faith that he's not poisoned it with some chemical. And if we have doubt, then again you can't eat food there. Now you walk into a room and you think, you know, there may be some very dangerous germs out here. In the fourth chapter... Agyascha Shraddha Dhanascha Sanchayatma Vinashyati Sanchayatma Vinashyati Nayam Loko Stinaparo Nasukham Sanchayatmanaha One who is always doubting can be neither peaceful in this world nor attain success on the spiritual side. So in the world also we are always having a leap of faith. The same leap of faith is required on the spiritual side. Now, where you place your faith is the biggest thing in life. Because wherever we place our faith, our life turns in that direction. A student, when he goes into the senior classes and he's got his classmates, he's fallen into wrong company, he places his faith on their statements. You know, there's nothing better than drugs. Now he placed his faith in the wrong place. His life got shattered. 
and if he had kept his faith on his parents instructions that this is the path to happiness not that his life would have become auspicious and successful mahatma gandhi placed his faith on satya and ahimsa satyagrahi satyagraha movement he started that the highest principles are non violence and truth and his deep faith was so tremendous that he inspired a whole country that was under british rule to shoot forward to independence without violence and then the saints they are inspiring us to have faith in god and the scriptures now it's not blind faith see blind faith then becomes very dangerous because then if you place it in the wrong place you had it you can go to hell so in this case there is no reason for blind faith to have faith in the bhagavad gita is so easy it's knowledge that was revealed 5000 years ago and it is still valid its principles are so relevant they are applicable to us you find oh they are answering my doubts if i follow these tools presented here my life is getting sublime so the bhagavad gita is benefiting you know people some people call me when i went to chicago so the alumni association of midwest they requested a lecture somebody told them he's also from iit So I said what do you want to discuss? Let's decide on a topic. So should I talk about spirituality or about God? No 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 no. No that's not so fashionable. So I said all right what do you want to talk about? Talk about stress management. I said that's fashionable. <laughs> so when we went for this program so we had all pretty seniors you know people who are really senior in the corporate world now many of them much senior to me so they are the top most rungs of their corporations <clears throat> when they are undergoing stress so how to battle stress i gave a simple verse of the bhagavad gita karma neva adhikar aste ma phaleshu kadachana which every child in india knows what is the cause of stress not our work but attachment to the results the attachment to the results is the cause of stress you cut that out and you keep working there is no problem so these principles of the bhagavad gita that was spoken 5000 years ago they are well relevant till today and all these great personalities shankara acharya madhava acharya nimbarka acharya ramanuja acharya they all considered it so important that they dedicated time to write their commentaries upon it so we have reason to accept and then you make a little leap of faith all right let me accept this as the truth and you start following the process and when you follow the process you will get the results your proof will be validated your hypothesis now that is the process in science as well you start off with a hypothesis that's what we did in our high school physics and chemistry in the labs and then you conducted an experiment and from the experiment you observed the results and the results either proved or disproved the hypothesis so do the same the, in this case you are the sample and the world is the laboratory and the hypothesis is what is given by the bhagavad gita so conduct the experiment for now take it as the truth and follow the instructions and if you get the results it's confirmed so that leap of faith is essential but shri krishna says arjun those who are not willing to repose their faith on me or they have other reasons for not following you know there can be a hundred reasons for not doing a good thing 
we receive the knowledge but for not implementing we can have a hundred reasons shri krishna was little egotistic that is why he was boasting about himself to arjun why did shri krishna not consider global warming it's such an important factor he's not mentioned it in the bhagavad gita now so many reasons can come up for not doing there are innumerable escape avenues in one of the chapters shri krishna says sarvopanishado gavo dogdha gopalanandana he says arjun these upanishads are like the cow and i shri krishna have milked this cow and given you the milk in the form of the bhagavad gita so dogdha gopalanandana i am the cow herd milking the cow so when guru ji was reciting the gita explaining the meanings so at the end of the lecture he asked his disciple that beta do you have any questions so the disciple said guru ji everything is clear one doubt i have you said do gadha you know the do gadha just elongate it a little so it becomes do gadha so gadha means donkey so he said you said do gadhas which are these two gadhas these two donkeys you were talking about guru ji said my child one donkey was me and the other donkey is you <laughs> there is no point explaining this knowledge of the gita to you it is like in hindi says they say puri ramayan sun li phir puche ram kaun hai after the whole ramayan you ask who is ram so in this way we can create so many obstacles to our sadhana yes i must do sadhana but if god desires i will do it now if we think in this way we have created an impediment god of course desires we also have to do our bit but in surrendering to god we have considered god as the only instrument so if i am not surrendering he is not gracing me it's not my fault it's his fault now if we think like this we will not do anything we will just keep sitting or another excuse is you know it's we agree swami ji we should do sadhana but if it's written in my destiny it will happen destiny is all powerful now he is transferred the blame to destiny now if destiny is going to do everything then i don't have to do so just keep sitting so in this way we keep shifting blame some people say when the time comes we will do it when the time comes time is passing by each moment that is passing is not going to return we have to use the time we have and not wait for when the time comes it will not make us do it automatically so shri krishna says arjun those people who do not follow my teachings for lack of faith or for any other such reason then they undergo suffering it's a fact The world has never given happiness to anyone. I was reading this, you know, those emails are passed around. The rich people of USA, 1925, all of them had a terrible, miserable end. So this world, no matter you may become the richest, you may become the most famous, the most beautiful, the most knowledgeable. the world you can never become happy in this world so shri krishna is now giving arjun a fact and saying arjun choose wisely the choice is yours